Skateboarding games have been a thing in gaming forever, but they weren't all that good. Look at Skate or Die. Hey, if those are my only two options, I'm choosing the latter. That all changed though in 1999 when we were all blessed with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. And what an appropriate name because you soar through the air like a damn hawk. These games were praised for their free flow arcade gameplay that encouraged experimentation and mastery of each course in order to collect all the collectibles while tricking your ass off the whole time through. The game was super successful. And since it was so successful, we got a multitude of sequels. And since those sequels were successful, everyone and their mother wanted to jump in on the cash cow now. Seriously, everyone was trying to be Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk with bikes. Tony Hawk in the water. Tony Hawk with a Razor scooter? What the hell? Metal Gear Tony Hawk. Disney Tony Hawk. Simpsons Tony Hawk. Edgy Tony Hawk. Tony goddamn Hawk. The only game to ever be a little bit different is a game called Thrasher Skate and Destroy that was made by Rockstar Games of all people. There's no hitting people in the head with bats or anything like that. This was actually a slower paced simulation take on the sport that had ragdoll physics, which was a new thing, believe it or not. The tech at the time was limited though, and it couldn't catch on and a realistic take on skating wouldn't catch on until eight years later. Series fatigue would set in on a Tony Hawk series, which is the perfect time to strike with something that's not only different, but is also good. In came EA with the Skate franchise. Skate is a more grounded take on the skateboarding genre. No flying through the air doing 1080s while collecting giant glowing letters. You're doing kick flips and grinds with realistic board physics and right analog stick controls where you flick the right stick in certain ways in order to do certain tricks. It was like a much needed injection of creativity that the skateboarding games needed. With the success of Skate, we would get a fantastic sequel. Skate 2 just has so much care put into it. As soon as you start the game, you're greeted with an animated title screen with skaters skating in the background and loading screens with your skater doing tricks. Creating your guy has you pick from tons of items that just scream skateboarding. Look at those baggy ass jeans. You could fit a third leg in there. I'm not making a dick joke. You really could fit a third leg in there. The game has this, I don't know, dark, underground, gritty look to it. Some call it a piss filter, <laughs> but I like it. On the corners of the screen, there's a fisheye effect going on here, which is obviously referencing how most skateboarding footage has the fisheye lens in the corner. It's like you're being recorded the whole way through. So I guess this is a second person view. Nick Robinson, eat your heart out. But yeah, little touches like that just make Skate 2 a huge love letter to skateboarding fans. In Skate 2, your career starts with this cutscene, and if I were to show you this cutscene out of context, you would think many things, but skateboarding game wouldn't be one of them. It sets the tone though, as you are someone who was in jail for shredding so hard you killed everyone in a five mile radius. You're let out and come to realize your town is even more anti-skateboarding than they were in Skate 1. Security is tighter than ever and have rail blockers on the rails. Do not sit down! This is the setup to the game, as you try and get sponsorships and work your way up. The town you skate in is so beautifully crafted. It's not the biggest map you'll find in a video game, but every nook and cranny is loaded with fun areas to skate in, and you are rewarded for exploring areas. Not only is the game filled with fun areas, the town actually looks like a legit town. Everything being connected makes sense, and the fact that you have security trying to stop you makes the map feel even more alive. Riding around town and running into new areas to skate in is the best part of this game. Taking an area that seemingly wouldn't be seen as a skateboarding area and skating there is more than half of the fun of the game in my opinion. The Skate series has the Flick It control system that I mentioned earlier and more tricks than ever, I might add. If you ever needed to see every trick or know what a, a tranny is, you could look at the trick menu, which shows your skater performing each trick and how to do the trick. The Flick It system is great and satisfying to use, although little difficult. Nothing is wrong with the challenge at all, but my only complaint is that I wish there was some type of on-screen prompt to show your stick movements. I feel like I do a trick, but I accidentally do another trick instead. The camera could be better, 
It's low to the ground, which I guess is supposed to be mimicking how skateboarding videos are filmed. But you can't see anything in front of you though. Trying to line up a grind is more difficult than it needs to be. You could switch the camera angle, but the problem is still there although not as bad. The camera is also pretty bad when doing a manual, like it's veering off to the side for some reason. I've seen fights on Worldstar with better camera control. The flicket system combined with the momentum based movement and great physics means you can spend hours just dicking around with the game. Especially with the replay system where you can make your own video game amateur skate tape if you wanted to. The game does add some new things, and this is the greatest new feature to be put in the history of video games. The ability to get off your board and walk. No, but seriously, now you don't have to awkwardly fidget around your board when you're in a tight spot. Inside those baggy ass jeans are some legs, and I'm glad we can finally use them. Yo, you know what happened when you were away in the slammer? We learned how to get off our boards. So get off your board and walk up those stairs. I mean, they should have put this feature on the back of the box or even make it the subtitle. Skate 2, you can walk now. I'd buy it. Now I know I tend to make a lot of hyperbolic statements, but I'm 100% dead ass serious when I say these are some of the worst walking controls I've ever experienced in a video game. You can't control the camera at all. When you move the right stick, your character just turns in that direction. Everything is so stiff and unresponsive. You can get used to it, but I just find it hard to believe that this game was released in 2009 and has basic movement problems like it's 1996. The other thing about getting off your board is the ability to grab stuff. Now, this is a game changer. You can use your grubby little hands to grab and drag anything. This adds a whole new dynamic to the game. Not only can you drag stuff to make your own stunts and tricks even cooler looking, this is also used as a puzzle of sorts when doing missions. There are certain missions you can't do until you drag helpful structures over to assist you. Like how the hell are you supposed to jump over these dumpsters? You never make it. Oh, you dragged the rain. There are these own the spot locations that you find around town just by skating. Another reason to explore this map instead of fast traveling like a goober, by the way. This is essentially spots where you have to score a high numbered trick in order to own it. These are open ended and can be solved in a multitude of ways, which is why I like it. Like how the hell am I going to do a trick on this thing? Okay, let's try this table. Cool, but now I have to score an even higher trick. Okay, let me get this other table and... Uh, okay, try again. Overall walking and especially grabbing is a great change. The walking controls suck, but it's not that big of a deal outside of one or two sections where you actually have to platform. The missions in career mode vary. They are simple little challenges that are realistic while still being video gamey. These simpler challenges are still difficult and fun. I like how grounded they are. Challenge right here, you wanna hit two rails. After you hit the first one, you wanna gap out over this ledge and hit the second rail. They vary from performing tricks in a well-guarded place with security swarming everywhere to getting pictures of a cool grind or jump. You'll be tested on practically every asset that the game has to offer. You suck at flip tricks? Well, here's a flip mission. You suck at grinds? Well, here's a grinding mission. You suck at critical thinking? Well, here's a mission you can't complete until you move an object to a specific place. Are you like me and suck at drops and getting air? Well, here's a mission where you have to drop into a pool and land on a balcony. By the time you're done with Skate 2, you'll be like a Megazord except with skateboarding. You'll be good at all assets of the game, which is something every game should strive for. 
In addition to these missions, you have skating competitions, which are nice. And death races. Death races are awesome. The earlier ones start off as a simple little race downtown, and it's a little bit linear, but the later ones are more open-ended with multiple pathways and shortcuts. You don't have to follow these flags if you don't want to. Trying to maintain control of your board with insane speed like this is a hell of a challenge, especially when you're trying to get those shortcuts. The missions are fun, but I just have a problem with two of them. Firstly, these tailing missions. Tailing missions in any game are the worst type of shitty, boring ass mission. They mostly involve following a character who's moving as slowly as humanly possible, and you have to follow them while moving equally as slow. This is different in Skate 2 because you're just following and not necessarily tailing, but you're still relegated to the person you're following speed. What makes this even more annoying is the unpredictable AI. Sometimes the AI will bail or get hit by a goddamn car. Someone call 911! And then they teleport ahead of you, which is super disorienting. These are garbage. Thankfully, they don't last too long. The second thing is this game of skate where you have to set tricks for others to copy or copy tricks others have set. In theory, this is fun, but the other skaters never fail to copy your tricks. Look at this. This is gonna Sweet. take forever, Jimmy. Yeah, man, I, I just had to look up an exploit. That's right, we're gonna cheat. I mean, can you blame me? Besides those two things, the missions are fun. Just think of those two as those little grain thingies surrounded by a bunch of Lucky Charms marshmallows. Skate 2 has a multitude of other skaters to play as, including Big Black. You know this is the best character when his arms fuse into his own body. When he falls, he bounces like a basketball. Plenty of other things like doing the Hall of Meat challenges which encourage you to bail and get hurt, and other missions where you need mastery of the map because it asks you to do specific things like grind for a certain amount of distance, but they want you to do it with no guidance. And you can get creative and create your own spot to own. Skate 2 is the best realistic skateboard game that has ever been made in terms of overall quality. Gameplay is hard to master, but fun to experiment with, and the map is a town that's not out of place and fun to explore. Skate 2 is a love letter to not just skateboard gaming, but people who enjoy skateboarding. While there are a couple of annoyances, the game has so much care put into it. Skate 2 is kind of like the black sheep in a trilogy. Both Skate 1 and Skate 3 are on Xbox Game Pass, while Skate 2 is left out, so I actually had to buy it. Skate 3 is something I may or may not talk about in a future video, but in my opinion, Skate 3 focused too much on extreme unrealistic challenges and, in a way, became what they were initially trying to separate themselves from. I think Skate 3 is also the most popular because a ton of YouTubers played it to showcase the insane glitches the game has. Here we go, baby. <laughs> Time passes and what's old is new again. Crash Bandicoot is back. Spyro is back. Dead Space is coming back. And even Tony Hawk is back now. Skate 4 is announced and is being worked on as we speak. I just hope they can craft an even stronger love letter than Skate 2 was. Thank you guys for watching. I'm not gonna tell you to like the video or anything because you're all grown, do your thing. Check out my other stuff if you want and see ya.